Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.6 developer beta two released today to developers, and it will be out soon to public beta testers. iOS 16.5 beta two is available to all iOS 16 supported devices, of course, on the developer or beta program. This particular update came in at a fairly small 403.1 megabytes that's on the iPhone 14 pro max. And it was released alongside a lot of other updates, iPad OS 16.6 beta two watch OS 9.6 beta two along with Mac OS 13.5 beta two TV OS and home pod OS 16.6 beta two and some older Mac OS updates as well. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go over to general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 20G5037D. As we get closer to a final release, that D will typically get closer to the letter A, and then they'll release it to the public. We'll talk more about when to expect that a little bit later. Now, as far as a modem update, we don't have a modem update from beta one to beta two. On the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max, it's version 1.80.00. So no changes there. However, some of the background changes indicate that there are some network updates, so that could see an improvement. As far as new features, well, in beta one, we had talked about contact key verification. Apple actually, actually mentions it on their website, and we can see that. In Safari on their website on December 7th of 2022, they talked about this feature, iMessage contact key verification. I'll link it in the description. If you want to learn more with beta one, you could actually search for it in settings and you would find it. However, that's gone in beta two for some reason. So you'll see beta one on the left, beta two on the right. It's just not there. So contact key verification could be coming in iCloud later on, but maybe they'll wait for iOS 17 for that, or maybe a later beta with that. Also based off of background information, when using iCloud with windows and verifying, there could be new messages when you're not on the same network, similar to when you're on home or in the home app and you're not seeing the same network. If you have multiple Wi-Fi networks, you'll need to be on the same network to verify with iCloud with windows. So that's something typically you'll get a message, whether that's in your Wi-Fi settings or elsewhere. Also, one thing I noticed is the camera seems to open a little bit differently, but we don't know of any specific improvements. We've been wanting improvements with the 14 pro and 14 pro max for a while. Sometimes the camera doesn't show up properly this time around. Hopefully it does. I noticed that it seems to open a little bit differently and maybe some of the colors have changed a little bit. Now that may or may not just be what you're seeing, but as you can see here, if we take a photo with the lights off and then see what it actually has, as far as taking a screenshot and see what the difference is you see there's not much of a difference. Hopefully we'll see some improvements, but HDR was overly aggressive and hopefully this will improve those issues that many have complained about, not just myself, but other big YouTubers as well. Also, one other thing I wanted to share is Apple has made the WWDC 2023 hash flag live on Twitter. Now, if we go to Twitter, you can see here, if you put hashtag WWDC 23, you'll have a little Apple after it. And it says a new era begins. And they actually tweeted this today. And also there's new information on WWDC where it says code new worlds. So they're getting ready for this, hinting at a VR headset. So we could see that hopefully very, very soon, but we'll have to wait just until Monday to see that. As far as bug fixes, Apple hasn't said anything specifically, but there are a few things to note based off of what's in the feedback app. So if we go into feedback here, wait for it to refresh and you can see after it refreshed that they haven't updated the feedback app. However, the public facing version of the developer website with news and updates actually shows some new release notes. So within the release notes, there's some known issues with matter accessories now where it says pairing a first matter accessory in a new Apple home will fail when paired by selecting an accessory from the nearby accessory list. They give a workaround here to pair a first matter accessory by scanning the QR code on the add accessory card in the new Apple home. So it's giving information with this. Also, there's some issues with Xcode, but nothing else is mentioned as far as issues or bug fixes. Now, as far as notifications at first, I actually thought that was resolved. If we go into notifications, you can see here that it's sort of fine at first and then it's buggy again. So you'll see it just jumps around. And unfortunately that's not fixed yet. Hopefully they'll fix it in the future. However, the issue I was having with the health app within the health app, if we tap on logs here, you'll see before this used to crash, I actually was able to resolve this by removing the actual medication I had here and then re adding it. Now it seems to work properly. That was a bug that Apple never fixed. I submitted feedback on, and it seems this just resolved it. So that seems to be fixed now. I haven't heard of anyone else having that issue. So it seems to be resolved. If you're having that, I would say delete the medication, go back in and it should resolve it. 
as far as overall performance, it seems to be nice and fast, whether you're just going into music, we'll do the same on iPhone 11 here, going into music, scrolling, You'll see if we go into browse, everything's just nice and smooth and fast, no issues here. And maybe we'll go into home, go back out. Everything seems to be working as you would expect. So no issues there. And initially the heat of the device was actually quite warm, but that's nothing outside of the ordinary when you install a new update. No problems there. We'll investigate that a little bit further with the regular follow-up on the weekend though. As far as battery life, well, hopefully this improves it for me as it wasn't very good before, but if we take a look at battery, go to battery health and charging, I'm down to 96%. According to coconut battery, I'm at about 97% and you can see the cycle count here. Hopefully that improves in the future. As far as battery life itself, yesterday was pretty poor. Three hours and 16 minutes of screen active time, nine hours and 26 minutes of screen idle time and used about 20 or 75% rather of the battery. Today, we're at about 25% and had three hours and 19 minutes. Much, much better this time around. So hopefully this resolves those bugs. I've tried closing apps, tried changing notifications and much more. It seems to be better today, but we'll have to wait and see as I've been testing this. Give it a few days and we'll see what it's like. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 16.6 beta 2, I probably wouldn't at this point unless there's something you need to test as far as overall code. Other than that, you may want to wait until iOS 17 is released with beta one. That should be in just a few days from now. So next week or half a week away, we should see that. So I would probably hold off on this beta unless you're developing for it. And then of course on June 5th, we'll have WWDC with iOS 17 beta one. So we should see that along with watch OS 10 and all of the other updates we expect at WWDC. Now, the other day, Apple also released watchOS 9.5.1. I did a separate video on that. It's just bug fixes. They haven't really told us what's in it, unfortunately, and there doesn't appear to be security updates. It's a very odd release, but we could see an iOS 16.5.1. If there's some additional bug fixes, such as the lightning to USB three adapter, that's not working with iOS 16.5. We could see a release as far as that goes. As far as future beta updates for iOS 16.6, we can expect iOS 16.6 beta three, probably in a couple weeks at this point, and it will probably run opposite of what we get with iOS 17 beta. So we'll have beta one of iOS 17, June 5th, the following week, we could see iOS 16.6 beta three, then we'll have iOS 17 beta two, probably in a couple weeks after that and back and forth all the way until September until we have a final release of iOS 17 to the public. So that's usually what Apple does. They change it up from time to time though. Now, as far as overall benchmarks, let's take a look at that. I used Geekbench 6 and actually saved the screenshots. So you can see today we had 2,503 for single core, 6,232 for multi-core. Compared to beta one, we had 2,511. So we've gone down a little bit, 2,503. And then with beta one, we had 6,182 for multi-core. We've gone up to 6,232. These are very insignificant changes and everything feels fast. So it seems like it's running fine and it's actually cooled down a bit since I talked about that just a moment ago. In general, it seems to be doing pretty well. And it looks like Apple's keeping all of the major changes with iOS 17. So I don't expect many more changes or feature updates with iOS 16.6. Maybe we'll see some other things with Apple wallet and changes here and there, but very minor changes going forward. iPad OS doesn't seem to have much in it as well with iPad OS 16.6. If you found anything else though, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.